organized. Thank you, DJ Celeste. So great to be here, so inspired by these conversations, and we have another one for you. Um, so again, I am Blanca Catalina Garcia, and I have had the honor to be a prospectus instructor. Prospectus is Walker's Legacy Accelerator, and I'm currently leading our Latina Prospectus, which is inspiring and so exciting, and many of the participants are here. So shout out to my Prospectus Latinas, um, and we have a wonderful talk with you today with um, our Latinx leaders. It is my honor to be speaking today uh, with Jennifer Rodriguez, CEO of Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Jennifer. Oh, I think you're muted, so I'm going to unmute you. I, there we go. There. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having me today. It's been a great program. I think I want Beatriz Acevedo to be my best friend. I she know, was right? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have the wonderful Inma Esparza Diggs, Senior Executive and Director of the Federal Advocacy National League of Cities. Welcome, Inma. Thank you. It's wonderful to be with you, and it's good to see you both, Blanca and Jennifer. And you're absolutely right. I think I want Beatriz to be my best friend as well. So just so much energy. Thanks for having us today. Yeah, thank you so much for being here, for sharing, and for representing. So um, our conversation today is going to be about uh, Latinx leaders. So I want to talk about leadership, but at the end of the day, we're also here um, in the Latinx Women Entrepreneurs Summit. So I wanna talk about being Latina. I wanna get your sense of what does being a Latina mean to you? So besides culture, race, ethnicity, what, what makes a Latina in your view? Jennifer, you wanna start? Oh, okay, sure. Um, you know, it's really interesting because I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, right? And I came here to the US um, to do my bachelor's degree. And I ended up in this uh, residence that was in the international floor, right? So everybody looked different. So I, to me, I did not realize it was such a thing as being a Latina until I was much older. I, I must have been, you know, once I graduated from college, you know, I went to university with a really incredible international population where diversity was just all around me. And so I didn't quite realize there was such a thing that there was that I was an other until much later, right? And, and now that I am embedded in the Latino community, um, you know, I, it, to me is in, in some ways, yes, there are differences, but in so many ways, we're just humans, right? And I think what we bring with us is a richness of diversity, even within the Latino community. Um, I think we are the kind of people that can really relate very well to others. I think there's something particularly special about Latin Hispanics in general, Latinos in general, particularly Latinas, because they're nurturing, by, you know, we're born with that, with that gene. Um, but there's a special element of the welcoming in who we are. And I think that's a very special characteristic in our community of Latinas yes. in particular. I love that. I love that community. So powerful. Yes. And Edma, what about you? Well, you know, it, it's interesting and in listening to Jennifer, um, you know, and what we have seen and, and just frankly, over the years and decades, as the Latino community has really exploded from a population standpoint, just in, in who we are and our numbers everywhere, um, we're, we're so different. Um, I grew up, I'm a native Texan, grew up in Dallas. Um, and, but just like Jennifer mentioned, moving to DC at you know the age of 17 to go to school, I didn't realize there that I was different, that I was a Latina. I mean, I, I just remember someone asking me, are you Italian? And I was like, what? No, <laughs> Mexican American. Um, and so then I realized how much, uh, how different I was and how much of an unknown commodity, so to speak, um, I was. And so a big part of who we are as a community is, is having to educate 
you know, people about who we are, what drives us, and frankly, you know, what makes us who we are. Um, you know, and, and being Latina is very much, it's in our DNA, literally and figuratively, right? It, it's our values of determination and drive, ideals, and what we believe. And, and frankly, we bust our butts to make our dreams come true, not only for ourselves, but our, our family. And, and all of that is done with dignity and out of respect for not just ourselves and our community and our family, but um, it, it carries over and transcends into our professional and personal relationships beyond just our fa family. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I totally agree with you. Had a very similar experience of sort of like, hey, you're Latina. Here's here's a label, and <laughs> and and just being like, oh, what's that? And I think we're all still figuring that out. And you know, just in my experience, having the ear, my ear to the ground, seeing how the newer generations and some of the some of the the Latinos that um, that uh, Beatriz and Natalie were talking about, where you have younger Latinos, Latinas that were were uh, born here in, in in the U.S. that have they're they're defining what that is for themselves and. Um, being in the prospectus group where we have over 30 Latina businesswomen from all over the U.S. and Puerto Rico, you know, just the, the diversity in our community together is incredible. And so that question, you know, has been sitting with me and most palpably recently. And so I was really interested in, in hearing what you had to say. And I agree with you. I think we have, we, we have, we bring that nurturing, that, that value of community and, and uh, what is success? What is our success? And what is your success? Is my success? We have this shared, um, this commun communal approach uh, to to business and to economic mobility. So uh, really appreciate that. And 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 with that in mind, that's a good segue to my next question, which is. I'd like to hear kind of what are the values that you feel Latinas bring to the corporate space, to business, to entrepreneurship. Ima, you want to uh, dig at yeah. that one first? So um, I serve as the chief lobbyist for the National League of Cities and a senior executive within the association uh, world. We represent 19,000 cities, towns, and villages, uh, where frankly, many of those local elected officials and city managers, they don't look like me, right? Um, the majority of them are not people of color that hold those local offices. And so I represent um, city leaders where I am in fact a minority in that and and you know I, I'm not the norm and my presence is not the norm in this space and I truly understand how much of an exception I have been um, and frankly have been in the majority of my executive roles in which I serve. Um, I'm cognizant of the fact that because of my Latinaness, the focus uh, on my work, what my parents have taught me and, and how I should treat others, but frankly, how I should expect to be treated. You know, I, I know I need to use my voice to speak up, be very clear. Uh, and I'm very clear that it's not always welcome or that some want to put me in this box, right? And I challenge those ideas and those stereotypes every day just by my pure existence. Um, but, you know, just going back and thinking about one of the things that Beatrice said about how, you know, because we are the only ones in the room, um, that is almost like a limiting mindset. And so to shift your mindset in the way that Beatrice does and says, because I'm the only one in the room, right, there is an opportunity. Uh, because no one thinks like me or looks like me or dresses like me or sounds like me, um, I am able to enlighten them quote unquote, right? With, with, with my Latina superpower. Um, you know, I, we bring, and, and in these executive roles, I have had to demonstrate time and time again, with or without resources, that we can make things happen. Um, that work ethic and determination, having to be a strategic thinker to leverage resources, uh, pull together coalitions and partnerships, to, to do and accomplish um, and, and frankly overcome unsurmountable odds is what we bring to the table uh, for any entity, any organization or business. And I, and I think it's important that because of who we are and how we've grown up, we, we understand the big picture, like who's not in the room, who are we forgetting about? 
And because of that recognition, we're able to understand where the opportunities are for business development and growth, uh, where we can work to create those opportunities. And, and at the end of the day, regardless if you're in the association world, the corporate world, the you know, business world, working for yourself, it's all about creating opportunities. And, and how do you do that? Because it's all about the economics, right? And once you can talk and demonstrate what the numbers are and, and, and how you can add value to either someone's bottom line or someone's product um, and, and have growth, then frankly, nothing else matters. It's just the dollars and the numbers at that point that speak. And, you know, I, I would say that regardless of what space or industry you are in, the same work environments um, that every employee, frankly, regardless of the skin color needs to thrive, that is ideally what should exist. But I feel like when those ideal work environments don't exist, we as Latinas, we drive in spite of those because we work to make it the space we need because that's how we've grown up. And that's constantly what we work against to be able to be successful, regardless of, of what it is that we're doing at that moment in time, whether it be our own education or our own professional growth and development. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I love that. That's really powerful. And um, I'd love to hear from you, Jennifer, as well, sort of what your perspective is. And, and, and if you can share with us, um, you know, we, we've been talking about this during this whole summit about uh, what it really looks like for Latinas and what it really looks like for us in, in business and uh, as entrepreneurs. So I'm interested in, in, in hearing your response as well. And, and I would love your insight as to what are the sort of your, what is your view of the current challenges um, from the perspective that we are presenting today, which is like, let's, let's just know about it. Let's put it out in the open so that we can um, do something about it. Absolutely. Um, so I think, you know, in my opinion, what, what I bring, what I see a lot of Latinas bring to the table um, is this idea of, it really does take a, a, a village, right? It's this idea of sharing and bringing everybody along together for the ride. I grew up in a community in which my mom used to take care of the kids in the street. And if we were not behaving well, she had the authority, the power to really go and be disciplined and, and demonstrate what, what needed to be done. And, and I think a lot of us bring that to the table. A lot of us say no when people are the people that need to be around when people are being excluded. So there's an inherent sense of community and, and fairness and, and the things that need to be done to make it right. I think we are by nature problem solvers um, and, and, and very practical. I mean, we come generally from families that are larger in, in, than the non-Latino households. So, so there's a lot of management of relationships there. And I think we're particularly good at relationship management. Um, I also think um, that we, uh, the, the Latinas I work with, and I work with a lot of them, tend to be no nonsense, right? They get to the point and they do not mince words. Um, and, and while for whatever reason we may have been the, the ones that I know this, uh, this um, I remember uh, Beatriz said, uh, calladita te ves mas bonita, you know, but being quiet, you look better. Uh, you know, the ones that are around here in Philadelphia, that does not apply, right? But, but I do remember being told that. Somehow we all rebelled against it. Um, so, so I think there's a lot of Latinas that have said, you know what, we need to step up and we're going to say things as we see them. Now, what we see as a challenge is, uh, to me, what I see as a, as a challenge, because I work in the Latino community here in Philadelphia, and Latinos in Philadelphia happen to be one of the most, uh, one of the poorest communities around the country. It's a 40% poverty rate in Philadelphia. Um, and, and so for what I see as a challenge is really that wealth building and how can we come together to really create that wealth, right? Um, and to do that, we need those in our community that are powerful and that have influence to not forget where they came from. And one thing that worries me is those Latinos that can integrate and sort of, I say, disappear into the mainstream 
this idea of graduating out of the Latino community is something that, that, that worries me. That once you have achieved the education, that you have the job, that you have married, and perhaps is you're married outside of the Latino community, which, uh, you know, I, I've done it, you forget to go back. And we don't want you forgetting because there's still a big community that needs to be brought along. And, and, and I think we, you know, that's one thing that worries me that I want to instill into a new generation, you know, remember where you came from and, and let's bring the whole community along. Wow. Yes. I, you just blew my mind with that reframing of graduating out of the Latino community. And the interesting part of that conversation is that it's not accessible to all Latinos. So because we are so diverse and we have so many different ethnic and racial backgrounds, it's that's more accessible to some Latinos than others. Mm -hmm. And it this, this question of code switching, this comes up a lot actually yeah. when um, I talk to Latino communities and, and it's certainly a question for myself of, you know, really saying, how do I assimilate? I mean, that's really, as an, as an, I, I, I am an immigrant to this country, um, and, and I know not all Latinos are, but I did come to this country from Chile, and certainly that was the goal. Like, how close can I get to an American accent? How close can I get to looking American, speaking American, and learning the code, um, and so that I can, you know, disappear. And I, you know, what I'm hearing now, this this idea of of not code switching as much, of of really bringing your whole self. This this idea that you brought forth, Irma, of like, no, this is my superpower. Like, you don't share my perspective. You do not understand the lived experience that I have. My point of view is the value. And Absolutely. so I'm I'm really I'm interested in that, Irma. Just how do you navigate that uh, specifically? Like, how 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 do you bring your full self and how do we sort of talk about that that sort of not code switching and not just saying to ourselves latina is our superpower but reframing for everyone else you know that that you have a latina so now you have somebody with a superpower superpower right. here right well you know i think the important thing is to understand and know what is happening right that you yourself are working to overcome those perceptions and shatter those judgments either intentionally or directly it it is still you have to be cognizant of it right uh especially when you work in a an environment where you know that people want nothing more than to put you in that box um and and frankly it's exhausting it is exhausting, you know, yes. I, I, you know, am, um, serve as the chief lobbyist for a group of uh, people that are so diverse on the political spectrum. And I have to uh, balance all of these divergent interests. And I think for some people who I know want to put me in a box or say I support this over this because of my Latinaness or what they perceive to be my own political judgments. It is a struggle each and every day. Um, but I, you know, and, and frankly, I, I think who we are and who we, we are seen as as individuals and frankly, um, push back against this notion that we're not representative of our entire race. Like I am a person. My name is Irma. Sometimes I lead with my mother hat. Sometimes I lead with my Latina hat. Sometimes I lead as a bipartisan leader working to come up with bipartisan compromises. Like I am multiple people, mm -hmm. but you know, the, the face of me is, is who I am. And I, I can't overcome that. But frankly, I don't want to overcome that because I think that's the value in me being in the room. That is when somebody says something that is off color or frankly is not okay, being able to speak to that, even if it's with a glance or a look, right? Um, being oh, able look. to speak up for people who are not in the room. Like, that's why my mother and father busted their butts to get me 
into school and make sure I was educated. That's why my father, you know, flew with me from Dallas at the age of 17 and took it, dropped his firstborn off at a university because he wanted me to have the opportunities to create spaces for people in, in rooms where, where we weren't, right? And um, early in my career, I, I worked on Capitol Hill and I worked for uh, my member of Congress, Eddie Bernice Johnson from Dallas, African-American woman, gave me an opportunity, gave me a job, and that was in 94. I went back, fast forward 10 years, and at the time, Capitol Hill was a very much white dominated male space. In 2013, I became the executive director of the House Democratic Caucus, and I went to my first meeting with all of the senior staff of House leadership. And first of all, there was a table uh, for a, a, a meeting for about 30 people, and I not only was only one of two women in that room, I was the only person of color. And that was in 2013, like a decade early. And I just realized how, how stagnant those institutions are and continue yeah. to be. And, and that's not okay. And so because of that, those obstacles that I and, and we all as a community face, they don't define us. Because every day by working to be in those spaces, to create spaces, um, we work to change that landscape. Um, but we ourselves have to take ownership about what it's like to create that spaces for others, right? Um, to be intentional about mentorship and reaching back. And frankly, educating ourselves, um, asking questions and being comfortable to seek out help from people who don't look like us and mentor us. Because frankly, we can't do it by ourselves, right? And when I say do it by ourselves, like as an individual, um, we all need help. Yeah, yeah, and that's actually a great segue. I was gonna kind of switch gears and and talk about that. I mean, you all here, you're, you're inspiring me, and I have to say, like, I didn't know how to have a voice until a, a woman who looked like me, who had found that, said, "Hey, speak up. Hey, you have this." You know, gave me permission to give myself permission. So, so I know for me, mentorship has been so key. But there was such a long time. I couldn't find, I didn't know how to navigate that. So Jennifer, what does mentorship look like for you? And um, tell me a little bit about that path. How did you find mentors? Um, who were those people for you? So I will say that uh, very early on in my career, I was not in places where there were a lot of Latinos. Um, actually, my first job out of school, it was um, National Academy of Sciences. I mean, it doesn't get more white than that, right? And so... Uh, <laughs> uh, but I did work at the fellowship office, which was the office that really wanted to increase diversity in academia. So I just, by pure chance, found myself in this world, finally, for the first time, discovering that there, is this, this, there are these major disparities in the United States at all levels, right? And so that's really when I learned that I was a Latina, basically. That's when I learned that there are just major structural issues in this country, right? And so there was a female there, a woman, the director, uh, who said, when are you going to get your master's degree? Because this, the office was about helping uh, minorities, which we called them at the time minorities, African-American, Asian, and, and Latinos, get into academia and become doctors and professors, right? And she's like, when are you going to get your master's? When are you going to get your doctor? Had it not been for that, for that woman, I may have just stopped at my bachelor's degree and not really thought that I could be anything else. And, and so that was pivotal. You know, right? like she, I don't think she understands the impact that that had. Right. And over time, other people really, and then the, another one was a gentleman that was a board of directors at a, a company I worked with, um, African American male that saw me. And I was the only Latina in that place that was such a, was a very important institution in, in Philadelphia. And he said, You're a Latina. You know what? You're the only one. Um, you need to meet this other person. And so I find that there have been people that just see something in you and they care enough to just pluck you out, right? I also find, and one thing that I would say to, to uh, Latinas, 
um, is that the math says that there are not enough Latinas in power and influence. So you need to be very open to working with people from outside of our community to build social capital. Because if you're gonna count on a Hispanic or a Latina finding you or you finding a Latina in a powerful position, the fact is that the math is not on our side for that, right? So you need to really be comfortable with people from other cultures and backgrounds being your champions or reaching out to them. I think that's very, very important because um, I tend to see that there's a sense of a, a little bit of insularity, you know, just mixing and staying within our own community. And that is really fantastic. Uh, but reaching out and across, it's one of the most powerful things you can do for yourself as an individual and for yourself as a, as a professional, I would say. I love that. Yes, absolutely agree with you, Jennifer. We have to use our, our skills, the skills that so many of us share because of our lived experience and our given circumstances to, to, to navigate across those silos. Silos are an issue across the board, but when, when you are in a position of being othered, of being in a community that is marginalized, um, really being able to capitalize on those skills and, and moving outside of those silos is so crucial and key. And this is just such an important topic, Ima, so I'd love to hear your, your take on mentorship as well. Yeah, well, I definitely agree with Jennifer that some of the people who have been most helpful to me in my career have been people who I had nothing in common with, right? Um, older white men who frankly got it, not only got the importance of having someone like me in the room, but frankly trusted my work experience, my skill set, and my professionalism to get the job done in the way that they felt like needed to get done. And so because of that, um, early on in my professional career, I was, I was given opportunities and, and, and opportunities were created for me, the doors were open, um, and, and I was receptive to them. Like I think that's the key also is, is being open to that help, that guidance, and, and being cognizant of when someone is really working to do that, especially if they don't look like you. And mm -hmm. frankly, that's quite all right. And that's not to say that people who do look like you won't help you. I'm not saying that at all, because that definitely has not been the case. Um, but I, I, I think we have to be very intentional in seeking support from people with a diversity of experience and skill set that we are either looking to achieve or need to leverage. We have to build our own networks. And so not only um, I, working to identify and build mentors and a network that will be supportive of us as individuals and professionals, but also uh, be open to the opportunities that might just be staring us in the face and, and we're clueless about, right? Um, we have to be active participants in that and, and really play a role and maintain those relationships because people do wanna see you succeed, whether they look like you or not. We just have to know who those people are and hold on to them. Yeah, yeah, I love that. It's so powerful and agreed. It's not that that they, all of that all of the mentors ha, don't have to look like you, but it's really about being strategic about like you, what you said, Jennifer. So the capital that most matters, um, well, that's that sometimes most matters is social capital and having the capacity to really build that network for yourself. You're right, Ima, because it's not going to be right there. It's not ready set. It's not in a platter. You got to create it. And so going out there and 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 like you said, Ima, Jennifer, like not. not not forgetting who you are, but, yeah. but really being able to use all of those skills to, 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 to build that social capital for yourself. And, and this is something that I, I am really curious uh, about in terms of, I, I, I agree with you that there is so much value in connecting with a mentor that has the skills, um, uh, who has the insight that you need, um, and that sees that in you, that lo looks at you and says they see that potential, and so they're willing to lift you up. Um, but if, in my experience, it has been a, a, an honor and an, a huge opportunity that as I'm building my career to find 
other Latinas, other women of color who have accomplished more than I have that are just a couple steps ahead. I mean, that's really all it takes to be a mentor sometimes. It's just just a couple steps ahead uh, to show you the way because it does look very different sometimes for us. The pathway is a little bit different. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in knowing kind of like um, how you act as a thought leader in the space that you are for other Latinas, for other, other, other people of our community. How, do, how does that look in your experience? I'm sure each of, each of you have that um, and, and people look to you. Um, so so how, do we, how do we cultivate that thought leadership and, and become those potential mentors for, for, for those uh, women in our communities? Jennifer? So, you know, um, I, I'm the president of a Hispanic chamber and we have a young professional network. Um, and so we use that professional network to really, um, you know, help this professionals in the Latino community uh, get access to people that they need in their networks to learn from experts, to really build relationships among one another. So I have the privilege really of, of working, you know, something very similar to, to you folks at Le Walker's Legacy, to have a, a community of up and coming and younger um, younger Latinos that are really thirsty and, and wanting to look for for opportunities and to build that social capital. So we have, you know, so we have programs around that. Um, and every time, you know, anytime uh, a young person uh, wants to talk a little bit about their re about their struggles, you know, I am happy to always, um, you know, have a meeting with them and make introductions and really tell them, you know, um, you know, sort of what the what the insider insider scoop is. One thing that I would definitely, and this is something that I like to tell um, young folks, uh, they they ask me, how did you get where I am? And I think one of the keys to the opportunities that have been provided or presented to me has been number one of course be prepared you know there's nothing like uh, you know the intersection of preparedness and opportunity you know it's it's really the the, the best way of, of really um, uh, you know getting ahead It's when you're prepared and the opportunity shows you can take it you know uh, but also I volunteered I was a volunteer in a number of organizations and not with a thought around how can I accelerate my career by volunteering. That was not my thought at the time. Looking back, you know, that's what happened. But I ended up meeting very key individuals in those volunteering, you know, when I was volunteering that really opened doors. And, and, and I can very well trace my career to the number of volunteering opportunities that I, or, you know, that I took my time to invest in causes and in organizations that mattered to me. And the people knew and, and saw the kind of work that I was capable of and, and started making connections and, and here I am. But if I had not done that, I don't know that I would have had access to people that would have been mentors. You know, it just really was what started me. Um, and I can, definitely look back and see where how all of that happened wow that's really good so be prepared but also just volunteering and taking the opportunity to to put yourself out there um so that you're working with people and making those those relationships i i love that and and i i know we're coming up on time so i i I wanted to hear also kind of what thoughts do you have? What kind of advice, kind of like what Jennifer shared, um, do you have Ima for our, our, our Latinx community here? Yeah, so I'll just quickly just say, I think the first thing and the most important thing is to be you and be true to you for you control your destiny and your happiness and don't give anyone that power. Um, you have to develop and maintain a growth mindset, meaning you do have enough, you are smart enough, you do have the resources, you will achieve. Feed your mindset because you will have setbacks, right? You have to keep your mind right and be very conscientious of who you surround yourself with and what you take in, the food you eat, the people you surround yourself with, what you read, what you listen to, we have to feed our soul and mind. Um, just three other quick things. All money ain't good money. <laughs> Make sure yes. you know that. <laughs> really be strategic about what you do. And if it doesn't feel right, 
you've got to trust your gut, mm -hmm. right? Um, and ask questions, seek insight, educate yourselves, um, and just know that you are not in this alone and people are here to help support you. And, and I'm one of those. Thank yeah. you. I love that, Inma. Thank you so much. I'm taking away so many wonderful gems, thinking about not forgetting where we come from. Our challenges do not define us. Intentional, intentionality, I'm hearing that word intentionality, intentional, intentionally building your social network, intentionally like volunteering um, and being prepared, um, but you know, having that, that mindset um, that mind clarity, a really, and the other thing I'm hearing is also just like trusting yourself and, and, yeah. and really banking on that, con that, that all of those wonderful things that make us Latina, um, uh, which is so diverse, but it's, it's magical. It is truly our superpower. Thank you so much for your time, Ima, Thank for you. your time, Jennifer. Muchas gracias. And, um, we're just going to take a quick break here. Uh, so I want to make sure that, we are on schedule. We actually have a little break with Celeste, our DJ, and then we're going to be moving into talking with the young Latina leaders. Really excited about that. Again, thank you to our wonderful panel. See you in a few minutes.